Maker tops all Ethereum tokens. Forbes joins Civil and the UAE to allow ICOs. Welcome to Ledger Mix. This is the daily show brought to you by Blockstreet that catches you up on the latest blockchain news. My name is Kenny Ferreira. Today is October 9th, and in our first story, Maker has become the most valuable Ethereum token. Without going into too much detail, Maker's platform uses smart contracts to let people borrow DAI, which is a stablecoin that's pegged to the US dollar. Borrowers use Ether as collateral and can only get it back after returning the borrowed funds plus interest. The platform has become so popular that nearly 1% of circulating ETH, the equivalent of $184 million, is now locked into the stablecoin, and that has made Maker's governance token, MKR, increasingly valuable. Though some people are skeptical of smart contract applications, the Maker ecosystem has proven that they are indeed valuable for the blockchain space, and this decentralized loan system is just one of their potential use cases. Speaking of Ethereum-based tokens, we also have news that Civil has joined a partnership with Forbes. As of right now, publications usually use private servers to store archives, but sometimes they're lost due to cost, a change in the content management system, or even human error. In an announcement on Tuesday, we found out that in Q1 of 2019, Forbes journalists will be able to upload metadata to the civil blockchain while simultaneously publishing their articles. So while this will not radically alter journalism as we know it, more efficiently timestamping works and verifying authenticity in an immutable and distributed way will be an enhancement over the current vulnerable system. Plus, getting a strong voice in the industry to buy into this process only adds legitimacy to the space. In our final story, the United Arab Emirates now has plans to allow companies to raise funds using ICOs. The CEO at the Emirates Securities and Commodities Authority said the board has approved considering ICOs as securities. As per our plan, we should have regulations on the ground in the first half of 2019. Over the last few years, weak equity markets and low oil prices have really hurt the performance of IPOs in the UAE and the Gulf Arab region more generally, so regulators are looking at ICOs to provide companies an alternative. With this new development, we're seeing a country, albeit reluctantly, acknowledge that cryptocurrencies and ICOs aren't going away if they're regulated or not, and we'll likely see other countries follow suit over time. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. If you watch this as a video on YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram, make sure to follow us and let us know in the comments what you thought about today's show. If you listen to it as a podcast, leave us an iTunes review because that's also going to help. I'll see you all tomorrow.